Hi, welcome to BB Flicks, our monthly program where we talk about what we've been watching lately with our with our uh, various librarians. Today, I, I am Bridget from the reference department and today I'm joined by Beth from the reference department, Casey from our youth department and Annie also from our youth department. Also happy to be here. Uh, all right, so I, I guess I'll start because we didn't decide the order that we were going in. So I will begin. Uh, the, uh, the thing that I'm gonna talk about, and I'm almost embarrassed to say that I watched this. This is what it is, but you know, it's pandemic times, we're watching what we want, right? I've been watching Cobra Kai, which is a 30 years later sequel to The Karate Kid. <laughs> now, oh, okay, yes. Probably you've seen The Karate Kid. It's about, a kid from New Jersey who goes to California, he gets involved with some bullies who all know karate, then he has to learn karate, and then he wins the karate tournament. And that is basically it. That's all that happens. Now, Cobra Kai is the bad, is where the, the karate bullies are in the Karate Kid. And so Cobra Kai is about the main bully all these yeah. years later, who turns out his life did not turn out great for a lot of reasons. Surprise, surprise. related to losing a karate tournament 34 years ago <laughs> not being a bully or anything it's totally just losing the karate. totally because he lost that karate tournament he could have had no other problems in his life <laughs> 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 but i will say it's i thought i think it's very it's both like funny it has a lot of jokes about sort of make like the cultural perception of the Karate Kid, which you have probably heard of, even if you haven't seen it. I think everybody is kind of familiar with uh, obviously like wax on, wax off and, some, and the like climax moment of the film, which is when the head of the bad karate dojo tells the bully to sweep the leg. And then again, he loses anyway. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that he did that. Uh, but so there's lots of jokes about kind of like the cultural impact of the Karate Kid, the 80s, why people are obsessed with karate. <laughs> uh, but also it's like, it has like a strong emotional core because it's kind of like, why, what, like, how did your life turn out? Not how you expected. What's the ways in which you thought your life was going to be? And instead, how has your life actually happened? Uh, much deeper than I would have thought from again, like a mostly joke sequel to The Karate Kid that is made 30 years later, has rights to be. Beth, what are you? Um, I just saw a movie, the, the Boston area Asian American Film Festival started yesterday. And it's the first one, and I will look up later what the name of it is, but it's about a young girl who wins the spelling bee. She wins like the Nash Scribs and as a young girl and what happens now as an adult so it's the same kind of thing what happens with this well for him it was failure for her it was success but it was really well done so i would, I would imagine that that's probably way more serious than this it is it, it, but it but it's got humor and it's really it's it was really well done because again i would say like most of the first season is a lot of sort of jokes about what we know about the karate kid <laughs> and sort of turning those on on its head and then the second season is like surprisingly more emotional there's like a lot of stuff with like mentoring children and the mentors of our respective sort of uh I'll say they're the karate kids from the original one because obviously the bully is also a child he is he's also a high school student at that time uh and sort of their respective mentors and senseis and how that has reflected on them in their whole lives. Uh, I just, it's surprisingly good. It is on Netflix. Wow. Uh, it was made for YouTube Red, uh, which doesn't exist anymore. That was when you could pay for YouTube, which was not successful. The people did not turn in in droves <laughs> to watch Cobra Kai, but apparently they have on Netflix. It's been in like the top 10 consistently. Uh, and so I'm going to say, check it out. You will might enjoy it more than you think. And you really don't need to know that much about the Karate Kid. Because again, it, it doesn't keep <laughs> later. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's what I've been watching. Uh, Casey, what have you been watching? Um, I have been watching 
Um, I am very late to the This Is Us, uh, which was all the rage, you know, four years ago when it when it started, because I think season five is about to start. Um, but one of my roommates and I have been working our way through um, through This Is Us, and um, I will say that I am really enjoying it. I mean, it's a lot of there's moments where there's a lot of like forced drama where you're like, oh, this character should have gotten their act together because they should have gotten their act together by this point, and oh, we're gonna make them this happen. But there's also a lot of really good, um, I always like shows where you actually have like a functional family because so many of the shows, so many shows kind of feed off of having dysfunctional families and the family is a core. So the story for, for anyone who hasn't watched it is that they're, it's the story of this one particular family, the Pearsons, and it's told in multiple time pieces of time where it starts with like the very beginning of the timeline is even pre when, um, the husband and wife me and it's their whole love story and they end up having um triplets they have three kids um and so you get stuff from the triplets when they're in their 30s and then you have a lot of flashbacks to way you know up to you know to when even when their parents were kids um and then a few flash forwards there's been a couple flash forwards so far um not that many but a few and um are the are the triplets played by one person or are they really triplets? They're not identical triplets. Um, so they are, there's, it's two boys and a girl. And actually one of the triplets um, isn't actually, so they, they were originally going to have triplets. One of the babies dies in, in birth. Um, but there is a baby dropped off at the hospital the same day that they end up adopting. So they still have, they still end up with a, with a set of triplets um and um so two boys and a girl and it's it's really fascinating because um it's Mandy Moore and uh Milo Venta whatever his however you pronounce his last name are the parents um and then um as far as I know the three kids were newcomers at the time I think Sterling K Brown who plays one of the sons um he'd been around before but i think the other two weren't really super well known at all before this um but it's it's really fun it's um it will make you cry on occasion um but it also makes you laugh a lot um the the characters are really fun even when you want to strangle them you know by an episode later you like them again um because they've actually made a smart decision in their life um, and they, the, the cinematography and the way that the stories are told is actually really clever. And I think that's probably what draws a lot of people in because they're doing the multiple timelines and you have at least, at least something in the present with the adult three siblings and something in the past with the parents and the kids when they're younger. Um, but they do a really cool job of paralleling things and telling a, a cohesive story, even while doing it in two timelines each episode. And I will also say that their casting for the younger versions of like the kids of the, the siblings is like a plus, like you would honestly believe that these little kids, like, cause they have, they have the baby versions and then they have kids who are maybe like eight, nine, and then they have like teen versions and then they have the, the adult actors. And I mean, you'd honestly believe that these kids are, uh, you know, the younger version of their adult selves. Um, so the casting is, and the kids are also amazing actors. Like they're amazing, really, really good at what they do. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's really fun. We're basically finishing up season two. Um, so anybody who's seen the show knows that we've gotten to like the big reveal that the first two seasons like build up to. Um, I won't spoil anything for anyone who doesn't know what the whole deal is but but yeah we're really really enjoying it and the the, the one son two of, two of the kids all three of the kids are dysfunctional the the siblings are dysfunctional in their own ways um one of them is married and has two little girls and their family is very functional like yes the parents occasionally fight yes they like don't always see eye to eye but like that's just normal and like at one point they get in this huge knockdown drag out like public fight and everyone's kind of like are you guys gonna be okay and they're like yeah we do this every few years and then we like talk about it and we apologize and we figure our 
crap out and we move on. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been really enjoyable. It's, it's, we've been watching it very slowly because of with the pandemic, it's not often that there's only two of us in the house. Cause there are three of us, there are three room. I have two roommates. Um, but we're working our way through it and really enjoying it. Um, and then my other thing that I've been watching is Gravity Falls, which is an entirely very different, uh, thing entirely. It's an animated series. Um, you know, little half an hour episodes. Um, and it's very kooky. Um, it's very kind of strange and ridiculous. Um, it's about the set twins again. I'm, do- I'm doing the multiples thing, apparently, just multiple children. <laughs> um, a set of twins who are sent out to the middle of nowhere to live with their great uncle at the beginning. And the brother, it's a brother sister pair, and the brother finds this book fairly early on because he, the, the, um, great uncle runs it's called the mystery shack and it's basically like bigfoot sightings kind of stuff store and the the brother fig finds out very quickly that even though no one else believes it's true all of the stuff is true like bigfoot exists like there are gnomes in the forest there's like all sorts of ridiculous magical stuff and so it's the story of the the twins kind of figuring out what's going on and I watched the first half of the first season and um, the roommate I'm watching that one with keeps being like, the plot's coming. I promise. Like there's a cohesive plot that comes through the rest of it, but I don't really mind because the episodes so far have just set up that this town has a lot of supernatural stuff and it set up all the interpersonal relationships and everything between the characters. And at the very end of the last episode that we watched, you get a hint that, okay, there's something about the mystery shack that makes it special and unique in a magical sort of way. And so I think from here we find out what's going on with and why like this. And it's it's supposed to be like the Pacific Northwest is basically where it's set is some like Gravity Falls, the town is somewhere kind of out that way. Um, and so I guess the rest of the next season and a half, it's only two seasons too. So it's, it's short and it's finished. Um, 20 episodes each, half an hour episodes. Um, so it, it should be fun. Looking forward to that one. And both of those you can find on Hulu. Complete series. Well, This Is Us, complete series so far. Gravity Falls, complete series, complete. Completed. But you can find new episodes of This Is Us when it comes back. Yeah, yeah. They usually post the new episodes up on Hulu as well. So. so. All right, Annie, let's turn it over to you. Yeah, um, I am currently rewatching the Great British Bake Off. Um, I am not going in order. Um, <laughs> I'll get into that later. Um, so the Great British Bake Off, if you're not familiar, um, I guess here it's the the Great British Baking Show. Um, but it is a reality based uh, reality TV competition um, where they're trying to find the next great baker in the United Kingdom. Um, Britain, who would have thought? Um, <laughs> it's quite different than American reality TV, which I think is one of the pulls of it. Um, it's it's not really the um, the drama that you might find in like in America's Next Top Model um, or e- even RuPaul's Drag Race, which is sort of, you know, a much campier and self-aware version of Top Model, but, you know, it still has this drama. Um, everyone's shown in quite a positive light um, and you really root for all of the contestants. They all Uh, seem very nice. Yeah, they all seem really nice and um, they help help each other. Yeah, which is something that I actually suspect happens on some American reality TV programs, but that's not good drama, so we don't show that. (laughs) Um, I actually watched this originally when I was in grad school, um, which I did in England, and I watched it as I was doing my dissertation. I found it to be really relaxing and calming, (laughs) which is very funny to me because now sometimes you watch it and they start playing like the pleasant music a little faster to show you there's only five minutes left and it's like dun 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 dun. And I'm like, oh my God, Val's not gonna finish. (laughs) I get so stressed now and I'm like why was this calming to me (laughs) um but it is you know it's a nice very relaxing thing to watch I find it to be um really pleasant um sort of escapism especially right now where it's just it's a nice and pleasant thing and you can also actually learn a bit about baking as well if you are into that um 
I've just introduced my my boyfriend to it and we're watching them sort of out of order. I'm literally just going, oh, I like that contestant. Let's watch their season. Um, the seasons are different in the US and in the UK. So I genuinely have no idea what number we're on or where they are. I just know who the contestants are that I like. <laughs> um, we're watching the older seasons, which have um, Paul Hollywood as a judge and Mary Berry, Mezabeza, and um, Mel and Sue are the sort of moderators, MCs of the show. Uh, those are my preferred seasons, though I am seeing, this is on Netflix, that it looks like, so Mary, Mel, and Sue have all since left the show. Um, Mel and Sue were replaced by Noel Fielding. I don't know who he is, but I find him absolutely delightful in the newer seasons. Um, he, I don't know what he does, but he, he is a British comedian. He oh, cute, yeah. <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense. He's really funny, <laughs> but he's very charismatic and just, he's very kooky in a way that I think fits the spirit of the show. Um, his companion was a woman named Sandy. Um, I'm sure she's really nice. I found her very forgettable. Um, I also, I don't really know who Prue is. She replaced Mary, um, but they're just sort of middle of the road judges. So if you're interested in watching, I would definitely recommend starting with the, the earlier seasons. Um, I, I find the critiques don't have quite the same balance that they used to. Um, and yeah, I don't really know like what Prue's personality is. I don't really get who she is. Um, My feeling is, because I've been watching the new season that's airing right now, is that yeah. Prue's personality is just posh she's just extremely posh yeah. and thus she doesn't have a personality she's just <laughs> fancy <laughs> well you know I watched the Canadian the Canadians now have one too and I really like that so, so check that out really nice not to be stereotypical but <laughs> I know they're very nice as well and yeah this is nice yeah I know the newest one has um with Noel Fielding as a judge Sandy's left and I think it's Matt Lucas, which mm -hmm. I'm really intrigued by. Um, Matt Lucas is in two things that I love. The first is Les Miserables. He was in the 25th anniversary concert as Monsieur Thenardier, and he killed it. Um, the <laughs> Thenardiers are actually my favorite characters in the show because um, I'm nuts, um, but I love them. He's also in um, Bridesmaids. He's one of uh, Kristen Wiig's like, weird roommates. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he is Rebel Wilson's older brother in that. Yes. Um, yeah, he's a delight. I believe he's considered to be sort of a national treasure in Britain as well. So um, I am interested in that. So I may dive into the newer seasons. I will say I've been, been watching this most recent season with my roommate. We make it a point. It's a part of our Friday nights because it comes out, they're coming out weekly on Netflix and we make it like part of our evening like we're gonna watch this and I have not been blown away by this season mostly because the challenges are a little too gimmicky and yeah. not it's like I just want to see people be good at making cakes and <laughs> not like have to make a cake that looks like a person yeah they've gotten very gimmicky and one of the newer but not the newest season they were for one of the challenges they were like oh you have to go outside and like build a fire and like bake something on this and <laughs> I don't know I feel like it's just getting a little far away from sort of the heart of the show if you will um because I feel like one of the part of the charm for me is that they're not trying to lean into any yeah. sort of gimmick um it's it's literally just hi we're here to they can be very pleasant to each other. Is it, do we think um, maybe it's because they've like run out of new things to bake? So they're like, we're going to add gimmicks because. Yeah, maybe. Some of it, yes. Is that they're, they're always trying to find like new things to do. Uh, so they, they have like created new things, but I don't think they need it. I feel like we would be fine with them recreating, like, you need to make a three-tier cake. Yeah. <laughs> they're all going to always come out. Every three-tiered cake that any expert baker is ever going to make is going to look 100% different from the next person's three-tiered cake. Exactly. But yeah, it's 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 great fun. Um, I would definitely recommend the earlier seasons. Um, the classics, the three-tiered cakes are where it's at for me personally. Um, 
I would also <laughs> definitely recommend um, have a snack, have a treat. With <laughs> oh yeah, You're very hungry. <laughs> you need you need a baked good. The yeah. minute they, you need a baked good. Yeah. So, be watching. Them. All right, Beth. Um, okay, so um, I watched on Bridget's suggestion. I was telling her how much I liked Good Omens with David Tennant and Michael Sheen. Loved it. And she told me that they were doing a um, kind of ad lib show called um, Staged, where they're doing it, it now within lockdown. And so they're using Zoom to talk to each other. And sometimes there's a third character, but they're trying to work in this pandemic on this play that didn't that they were supposed to do in the West End, but because of lockdown, they didn't get to do it. And it's really funny. They, they're just, I, I really, I, there's, I love them in Good Omens and they're really good here. They're, they're being themselves exaggerated. And um, Michael Sheen, you just see in this one, in his home, one, like a study, and you can hear his baby sometimes crying in the background and his wife, it, not his wife, his partner sometimes comes. You can hear her as she's there. And then with David Tennant, he's all over the place because he has like six kids. So he has to keep on looking for a place where the kids aren't. And, and his wife is also on it. And it's, it's just really fun. I, I, and they're also in lockdown. So it's, I really loved it. Um, and so interesting. And um, it's made me think I'm going to go back and watch Doctor Who, which I never have because hmm. I want to see David Tennant. Okay, have you guys watched it? That's okay. where I I basically know Tenet from. I mean, I know him from a lot since then, but that yeah, that, yeah, that's that's where he started. And of course, David Tennant is a huge Doctor Who fan. Yes, and achieved perhaps everyone's dream in that one of the Doctors Who is his father-in-law. <laughs> I know he. It's it's amazing. I mean, he he. That's his favorite, I think. And that he got to take over. It was one of his, that's how he, he wanted to become an actor was from watching yeah. his father-in-law be Doctor Who. Amazing. Yeah. Oh. He, he is a very good doctor. I've seen in the new series, I've seen seasons one through five, but I usually say four because I don't remember five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I viewed it, but I don't remember what happened or who was there. Do you remember what seasons? I, I watched all of new Doctor Who through the like first half of um, Peter Capaldi's first season and then I stopped. So when you say the new Doctor Who there's there, there have been a lot of Doctor Who's yeah. right? So, so, it started in like the 1960s. Yeah. So there were seven Doctors I think and then was the eighth one a movie? The eighth yeah. one is a movie. Yeah around the and, 80s I think. And, and where does David Tennant fit in? He is in the, the new, new Who which oh. started in 2005 with yeah. nine who is Christopher Eccleston and then David Tennant is 10. Yeah. He's the next one and then uh, Matt Smith. Smith is 11 <laughs> and then Peter Capaldi is 12 and then um so uh, what's her name is there the now so, doctor is a woman and i can't remember the actress's I name totally know her name hold on i can her her face is in my head right now but i don't remember her name and that so, she is the doctor right now i don't know if this is a lot of controversy but do you guys have a favorite doctor who J jody whittaker jody whittaker yes yes my favorite is Christopher Eccleston and is it Eccleston or Eccleston I always say Eccleston. Eccleston. Well, I say Eccleston but I don't know I've heard it said it's I'm pretty sure it, it I mean it's a British version of Eccleston but it's <laughs> I'll say the ninth doctor is my personal favorite and the reason be uh, tenant's very close for me because I think he's very good but with the ninth doctor they knew he was only there for a season so his season is just really really tight um whereas with David Tennant there's a couple like bits where he will absolutely contradict himself just because he's he's there for a longer time and I don't know stuff must get lost in the shuffle but the overall season for Doctor Who returning was I thought really strong um so I have a very warm place in my heart for angry ninth doctor <laughs> 
but I would say Tennant's a really close second for me. He's just, he's a great actor. My personal favorite is Eleven, who's Matt Smith, um, because he is very weird, uh, which I think is a good quality in a doctor. And also, despite the fact that he was at the time, I believe, the youngest person and might still be the youngest person to play the doctor, he does a remarkably good job of seeming very old. Very old. <laughs> yeah, I think in some ways Matt Smith's my favorite, but he was the first he was by the time I started watching, it was right as his reign was starting. So I went back and watched the Christopher Eccleston and um, the David Tennant episodes, but Matt Smith's the one that like I spent in a, like the most time with because the rest of them I just basically binged the earlier series, the other, earlier seasons. Actually, when I was in grad school, that's when I binged. That's when I binged Doctor Who was was in grad school, and um, and I think Matt Smith started maybe like the year I you know like the year I graduated, um, and so yeah, so so like I really liked Tennant and Chris Ruggleston. like I really like both of them. But, you know, I spent so much time with Matt Smith and I liked a lot. There was some stuff in, that they did with his stuff that was a little like, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but overall, I really liked his his time. And I liked a lot of the people, like the companions of the people that played off of him. I really, really liked. So what I'm hearing is I don't need to watch the old Dr. Smith. I just can jump right into the new. Yeah. Well, I've never start, seen. Start with, start with Christopher Eccleston and just watch okay. it from there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You yep. can't watch all of the old stuff anyway because they were destroyed. A lot of them were destroyed and they don't exist anymore. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. There's, a, yeah, there's a lot of them that they don't have, and a lot of them, a lot of them, they've done like radio dramas since because they know like enough, or there's versions out there that are like corrupt that they can kind of. But there's a lot of the old, and it's, and even if you, even if it all existed, trying to actually find it and be able to watch it. If you're not British, and even if you're British, it is um, it is difficult to track them all down. And they're also very, the whole world's confused on what order anything goes in for a lot of the early, early who. <laughs> um, like you look it up on Wikipedia and even Wikipedia is like, oh no, what order this stuff was in. Maybe this is the order we think, but like, I guess a lot of things were like broadcast out of order and stuff. And so no one really knows. Were so, how some of the seasons were supposed to go um the other show i wanted to tell you all about it's a um jeff really liked the 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 first thing that i saw this gentleman in. he was it's his name is josh thomas australian okay. and um he was in please like me jeff is the head of reference um and now well i don't know yeah i think it is now he's in everything's going to be okay, which is, so he plays a gay man and his father left when he was really young. He, he's from, Aust he himself is from Australia. He goes to visit his father as an adult. His father has two daughters now. So his half siblings and his father tells him that he's dying. And, and um, the actor becomes their their father you know their their half brother becomes their guardian and it's it's i guess that sounds really sad and it is but it's also really warm they one of the daughters the older daughter is autistic um there's there's a lot of love in it that one point they're all dancing around throwing flowers at each other it, it's it's really very sweet and and um uh, the half brother, he's also gay. So he's out, which in the earlier TV shows, and he was just coming out. Um, but this one, he's out and there's a love interest. It, it's really heartwarming. It's really heartfelt. It's, it's, it's a nice one to watch now in the pandemic. Nice. Yeah. We need, we need more like things that would cheer us up. Do you think I feel like I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through do like a quick wrap up and be like I feel like This Is Us is usually a show that people cry at so it's an emotional show Great British Bake Off can give you those like warm <laughs> fuzzy feelings but also tension because you don't want the cakes to fail 
yeah. I'm, I'm still, it's been years and I'm still mad about a baked Alaska situation. I was just about to say the baked Alaska. Yeah, I'm still mad about a situation with the baked Alaska. I, the rage, I feel. Great episode, <laughs> though. Great episode. I'll have to look for that one. <laughs> uh, seems like warm and fuzzy, but maybe a little sad. And then funny, seems like staged is funny. Where Where yes. is staged scream is streaming? I'm going to ask. Where is it staged? Yeah, the show, yeah, the David Tennant and Michael Sheen show. Well, David Tennant is in, I think he's in Scotland. He is Scottish. But, he, I mean, what service is it on? <laughs> oh, oh, I was wondering. <laughs> and, and, and let me just tell you, Michael Sheen is in Wales because he's Welsh. Um, you know, it's either Netflix or Hulu. I get both and I'm not sure which one. Okay, well, I'll look it, I'll look it up. We'll put it in the notes for yeah. that. And, and yeah, and I can bring you karate feelings and jokes about the eighties with Cobra Kai. So, you know, the, the full range of human emotion represented here. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <laughs> so thanks everybody for watching. We'll be back next month where I'm sure we'll be just as distracted and have watched just as many disparate things. I'll say weird, random things. Exactly. I love when I'm in charge because there's no plan. <laughs> <laughs>